something. And so I'm going to see if G will put this at the beginning of the video instead of at the end when you might have already signed off. But I received two happy mails and I just want to say a big thank you. Um, Yvonne sent me one of my favorite designers, Kathy Schmitz. Isn't that gorgeous? Blessed Sampler. That is on my list to do. I love everything about it. And see, in the, in the heart, I can put G plus A. Yeah. It's adorable. What I'm really interested to figure out is what I'll what thread color I'll stitch it in because I could do it in any thread color. Um, thank you, thank you so much, Yvonne. And then <laughs> this is like look at this little bag. It has it has hexes stamped on it. French General bag. French General. Yes. Hetty's Mini Hexagon bag. So there was a pattern in here. And this, oh, and it's a whole little kit. And it's Hexies. What can I say? So Kathleen sent this. And This is from, oh, this is from near where I used to live, down in California. Hetty's Mini Hexagon Bag. So, it's a kit to make that little bag. I'm definitely making that little bag. I mean, a little bag, French General, and all the thread and everything, and the Cut out little things to make it. And some French general fabrics. Oh, I love French general. And I just made that French general blue, um, blue quilt top. Thank you so much, Kathleen. I am mesmerized by this because I didn't look at the whole pattern when I opened it up. Oh my gosh, it's got the needles and everything in here. And the lining, is that really? Oh, look at that. And the ribbon you need, and the bone needles. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Okay. I've got the hexy bug again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your, uh, your generosity is... Sometimes it's overwhelming, but at the same time, I think sometimes we have to learn to say just thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to the video. Good morning, or maybe it's midday, so good afternoon, Quilt Roadie friends. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, Today is a beehive day. Yeah, I, ha I have had um, so much going on this last week that uh, I really felt the need to just um, be in the beehive. The weather today, just to give you my local weather report, is um, overcast, 
possibility of showers. It's a little bit on the chilly side, but that's okay. Um, we had some beautiful days of sunshine, and I, we were able to um, hang out with our uh, middle grandson and play um, on the river, which is always so much fun. And it's interesting because uh, the river in the Portland area, a lot of it is what's called brackish water, which means that we get ocean water coming in down from Astoria, and then you've got river water. And so you do get um, on the river, uh, sometimes there'll be seals. Um, one time there was a whale that made it all the way to Portland. <laughs> He was like, does anybody speak English? It reminded me of that Indiana Jones uh, movie where the guy's walking around. Does anybody speak English? And and this whale is all the way. But does anybody speak whale? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he had fun collecting clamshells and uh, just um, enjoying outdoor and nature. It was a great time. And then we came back home and set up our um, sandbox, our little sandbox area. We had bought a, a, a bag of playground sand to replenish the sand. <sighs> yeah, we took advantage of those sunshine days. How about you? Are you having any sunshine days? I hope you are. It really is good for the soul. But since it is overcast, I thought today would be a good day to be in the beehive. I have a lot of plans. I'm like so shocked at myself because I got my uh, postcard done. And if you don't know about the postcards, um, they are usually the anybody anybody can make a quilted postcard. It's the same size as a postcard. If you go on the Sisters Outdoor Quilt um, Show site, there's information. Um, all of the instructors um, are kind of asked to make a postcard that they auction off and the funds are a donation um, to the music and arts. So I, I felt that kind of um, Pressure. Boy, I better get my postcard because usually the instructor postcards are framed the, and the framing is beautiful. The framing is absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, so uh, they have to have time to frame them. And when I talked to Dawn, who, who um, runs the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, she's the manager of it all, um, I said, so I have to get it in uh, by the middle of May? And she's like, no, no, the beginning of May. <laughs> she was so sweet. So I, I felt compelled to work on that. So I got that done and actually got it in the mail, which, um, you know, every so often I have these bursts of adulting. And I... I relish in them because they don't come consistently, but when they come, I feel quite proud of myself. And so I was quite proud of myself. Um, the next video, I will um, show you some of the postcards that I have won at auction because I just love them. Uh, I have one by uh, Jean Wells. Uh, I actually, I think I told you this, I bought my own postcard because the framing was so fabulous. Um, Scott Hansen, Carla Alexander. Yeah, I, you know, they're little pieces of art and little pieces of memory. Um, yeah, so I wonder... Who will get my postcard this year? Who will get my postcard? 
So I got that done, and then, you know, at Quilt Retreat, if you watch that, if you haven't watched that video, you just have to, because I literally was a quilter on fire, and I got so much done, I was like doing the happy dance, and uh, so as you saw at the beginning of this video, that uh, my friend Cheryl invited me over to use her long arm machine. And, you know, at first I was going, oh no, I don't want to impose and stuff. And she's like, no, no, you've got to come try it. You know, come up, you know, I'll walk you through it. And so since I was under a deadline for my grandson's quilt, his birthday's in June, and his was the Minecraft quilt, the Minecraft quilt. The Minecraft quilt that's the yellow brick road pattern that is not the yellow brick road pattern. Um, so I took it over there and it got quilted exactly like I wanted it to be quilted. And the last time I had a long arm, it was all quilter driven. Uh, her machine can be quilter driven, but is also, um, you can program it and then you just like go on about your chit chat and well a machine is doing the job. And then every time it gets to a certain point then you roll the quilt and then it keeps going. I mean, it's so tempting. It is so tempting. So I spent the um, middle part of the day with uh, Cheryl and if you are so inclined, uh, Stitching with the Sisterlies is her YouTube channel she does with her sister. It is a combination of quilting and cross stitch. So if you're a quilter, you're, you're going to enjoy it just as much. So I would head on over there and I'll put a link down below for that. But yeah, it's um, so I went over for the day and did this quilt and it was like four hours and done. It, you know, it would have taken me days. And then when it got to the very end, you know, there's just a little uh, more section than the pentagram uh, would cover. And so I free motioned the very last part. And what I did was I put his name, I like, just like I was writing. I wrote his name and and I wrote down that Nana and G love you. Just across the bottom. And I'm not going to even tell him about it because uh, someday he's going to be looking at that and he'll notice that, well, there's something different down there. And I love those. I love those secret messages. I don't know if I I know I've told you, but I'll tell you again. The very first quilt I ever saw, handmade quilt, was by G's dad. And he made it for my oldest son. My youngest son wasn't even born yet. And um, I wish I had understood then what that truly meant. But I wasn't a quilter then. And it was another blanket my son used it till it was in shreds. But now that I make quilts, I, I truly get how extraordinary that was for his grandfather to make him a quilt. And little did I know at that time, because it was several years after that that I got into quilting, little did I know that my father-in-law would have inspired me in such a way. Yeah. So, uh, there's a little story for you. So here's this whole quilt, all quilted, and now I'm putting the binding on. And I have to tell you, I, I don't have one of those setups, although I was talking to Cheryl about it, about having a setup where you could actually film what you're doing. Um, when I've done that in the past, it's actually G holding the camera. <laughs> Uh, and he's got his own hobbies. <laughs> so 
I think I am going to look into a way to do that so that when I do, I don't necessarily want to do tutorials because that would require more adulting than I'm capable of. But I could show you how I do a few things. And some of the ways I do things are shortcuts and won't appeal to the purist in the group, but um, but there might be some of you who understand the need to be finished. <laughs> yeah, to be finished. So the way I'm doing this binding is a first time for me. Um, I like to hand tack down binding, but lately I have been under a um, deadline, and I have two... I have the auction wall hanging and um, a quilt that will be in the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show that I will be hand tacking down. It takes it takes a while to do that, um, especially now. Some of you would say it doesn't. You just sit and watch TV. But when I sit and watch TV, I'm either cross stitching, wool stitching. There's so much hand stitching in my life that hand tacking a binding sometimes is more of a chore than a relaxing moment because I think of the other 20 things that I could be stitching. Um, but there are some quilts that I will continue to um, hand stitch because I want them to look a certain way. This, on the other hand, is a quilt for a birthday boy who's turning six and he will not be critiquing this quilt uh, and it will be washed and used till it's threadbare so why not do something a little more um, sturdy I guess a little more sturdy and at retreat I had heard from a couple girlfriends that do a lot of charity quilts and their own quilts that they have been machine tacking down the binding and pocket robin was talking about zigzag stitching and i thought i'm going to give that a try and so that is what i'm doing so i attach the binding to the quilt and it's part of the flannel that's the back that's the backing. I found this perfect flannel. It's the Snuggly flannel at Joann's and it's perfect for this quilt because it's got all of this text about gaming. You know, start, play, companion, okay, score, you know, it just has all this uh, game terminology on it and it's a nice color that goes with the front and it's soft so I decided to make the binding out of the same flannel so that the edge of the quilt would have that softness you know you've all had babies uh, or seen babies who like the satin edging on a quilt or a blanket I wanted this to have a soft edge, a soft edge, so I decided to make the binding out of the same fabric. I cut it two and a half inches wide, folded it in half, and then I used my walking foot because there were so many layers. There was the flannel on the back, there was the batting, there was the cotton on the top, and then the double flannel binding. So I used my walking foot to attach it down. And then I ironed it out. So it all got ironed straight out. Um, then I started thinking about, wow, that zigzag foot. This is going to be tough because it's going to be double those layers tacking the binding down. And so I left my walking foot on the machine and I programmed my machine for a zigzag stitch and very carefully 
looked at whether the zigzag stitch would maintain itself inside my walking foot without breaking the needle. And it did. Yes. And then I tried stitching from the back. I folded it over and tr I tried to stitch from the back and I didn't like the way it was looking on the front. So I have to take that little section out. Um, so I switched my modus operandi and I'm stitching from the front side of the quilt, holding the binding underneath and doing the zigzag so the zigzag hits right on the edge of the front. I really don't care about the back. And I'm liking it. I like how it looks. And I'm going to get this binding tacked down today, which is even better. Um, because the birthday isn't until June. And look at me. I, I, where's the crowd that claps? You know, I mean, where's the clapping crowd? <laughs> I really need I really need that. Do, do I hear you clapping? Yeah. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited at this. Um, yeah. So then, spending the day at Cheryl's is always a um, a gift because uh, she lives in such a beautiful area, and she's got chickens. She won't get goats, though. I keep trying to talk her into getting goats, but she won't get them, you know. Um, and we actually, when we um, were going to the river, we actually stopped to do a little shopping at one of the farms. And a lot of the places in this area, the farmland in this area, you'll see a farm stand. And there were goats and chickens there. And... Um, my grandson was really, I said, don't stick your finger in the fence. You'll be nibble nibble. You'll be nibble nibble. But when I was um, kind of going through the closet again, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to work on next, um, I know I have a pile of quilting to do, but I got the piecing bug. Uh, retreat was amazing in that way, in that it inspired that, um, it inspired that need to, for speed, <laughs> for the sewing machine to be going, <laughs> yeah, the need for speed on my sewing machine, and, uh, I found a project in a bin in my closet that I had purchased from the Stitch and Post, and it's like, it's a very, very simple quilt. And it's called, um, the fabric line is called Camping Crew, and it's by um, RJR Studios. So here's the, here is the backing. Now, I really feel like this needs to go into the van. I, I mean, G spent this last week waxing, washing and waxing the van. So here is the, it's just a simple pattern. The strips are already cut. And the pattern is included. So any additional cutting that I need to do, I probably have to cut these in half, I would think. Um, yeah, so this is going to be the next piecing project that I do. Yeah, so much fun. Um, and, oh, and I, I tell you, fabric is like um, it's the salvage sometimes. Do you, do you do that too? Do you look at the salvage? I kind of look at the salvage. Because look at this salvage. 
of course I make things out of salvage, so. But look at this salvage. Oh, <laughs> here we go, here we go. It's little campfires. I mean, and if you didn't know, the salvage colors show the dyes that are used in the fabric printing. And so you can, according to Jen Kingwell, you can take the salvage if you need to get additional fabric. You can just take the salvage with you and you know the, the colors that might go with it. Um, so I'm really excited about making that. Um, but right now I need to get this done. And I have a lot of hand stitching to do. <laughs> I just have a lot of hand stitching. I, I know my sashiko's been yelling at me. I really want to get into that sashiko. And um, Wooly Wednesday, which is once a month at Pioneer Quilts in Portland. Uh, it's a bucket list shop for sure. But Wooly Wednesdays has been really enjoyable because you just, um, you get to see what other people are working on. You, you get to be with other stitchers in an environment that encourages you to keep on stitching on wool. And you know, I love everything, all of my favorites in the woolly world, Sue Spargo, you know, Buttermilk Basin, um, Reet's Rags to Stitches, um, Primitive Gatherings. Uh, there's, I have so many fabulous wool projects, you know, and then the pastime, the one that I just did with the, the beehive, I just have to put the bees on it and make, um, make the pillow. Uh, wool projects are just they're so relaxing because they are there's not really a lot of counting you know except when you get to you know doing um, when you dive into Sue Spargo then you're talking about learning artistic techniques that are a little bit different but uh, yeah so I have a lot of that going on let's see the next Wooly, um, Wooly Wednesday at Pioneer Quilts in Portland is, I believe, um, May 17th. Yeah. So I hope I see some of you there. If you're passing through the area, you've got to stop to shop. And if you live anywhere within a two-hour radius, you've got to come. Um because it is absolutely so much fun. And it's just one of those shops you can't leave without something in your bag. You just can't leave without something in your bag. I have been um, enjoying my reading and um, I've been just watching reruns. I don't know. I'm I, I get, I'm really, really tired of the news. And so I'm distracting myself with reruns of Friends, um, Castle, Bones, you know, just uh, trying to dive into that and forget about the world outside of the beehive. You can't, you can't totally. Eventually you do have to engage in the world. But here we get to pretend that this is the perfect place, don't we? Okay, well, that's all I got for you today. I hope I see you next time. Please take the time, if you're not subscribed, to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It helps the algorithms and actually pushes the video out to a broader audience. And it doesn't hurt you at all. So, thank you again. We shall see you soon. And let's get stitching. <laughs>